everyone and welcome. I'm Amy Rose White, Integrative Psychotherapist. Thanks for being with me today. So I'm outside this morning <laughs> trying to make this video before tomorrow on this full moon partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Gemini on the 30th because it has some really, really significant energies associated with it that's going to take us to the solar eclipse in a couple of weeks and then to the winter solstice and then into some major change in 2021. And I personally believe as an integrative psychotherapist that we can use the astrology to better enhance our process in personal development, in spiritual development, in understanding our past, in understanding our pain, in decreasing our sense of self-blame and shame, and better knowing ourselves as we move future into the future collectively and individually. So this full moon partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Gemini on the 30th is really about closure. And eclipses are that, they are endings. Oftentimes lunar eclipses will be more associated with endings associated with women or feminine energies. But in my experience and my sense of this particular eclipse, it's really about putting closure on the past, especially around painful relationships. Now those could have been painful relationships from childhood with either parent or other folks that raised you. It could be painful romantic relationships, even friendships or traumatic relationships with colleagues. There's a real theme of intense emotion coming up around trauma from the past. And all of us to some degree carry some trauma. Uh, from the past. Needs that weren't met, betrayals, not feeling heard, seen, understood, doesn't have to be outright abuse. And a lot of us lived with emotional neglect that we might not recognize as trauma, yet has had a profound and significant impact on our life experience and our relationships with other people in our lives. So I feel very strongly that this eclipse tomorrow is a real opportunity to use some of the insights and memories and thoughts that you might have been having over the last couple of weeks because especially for you sensitives out there myself included we've been feeling this eclipse energy since the beginning of the month of november and if you have found yourself somewhat scattered or having just lots of thoughts kind of coming from nowhere particularly about the past Maybe suddenly finding yourself thinking about an old situation you haven't considered for a long time or rehashing a pattern or a dialogue or a story of a relationship that did not go well, whether that is from your childhood past or in the last 5, 10, 20 years of your life. That is eclipse energy. That is about a story that is asking to be healed. So I want to discuss in this video how to use the sort of natural culmination of intense emotional energy that all of us are feeling right now, just about everyone on the planet, particularly those sensitives, that intense emotional energy with the thoughts, images, and memories that are coming up for a lot of people. Now, many of us may label that as anxiety or OCD or depression, that there's something wrong. And of course, if you are having symptoms interfering with your functioning, you do not feel like yourself on a regular basis, I absolutely encourage you to seek extra support from a therapist, coach, spiritual advisor, whoever you connect with, a medical professional, whoever you connect with and feel comfortable with to get additional support. However, if it's not rising to that level, or even if it is, I really suggest looking at what is coming up in a more strengths-based positive way rather than necessarily imagining that there's something wrong with the intensity that's coming up. So right now is a time to evaluate the stories, those mental stories that are playing out, those memories, um, those feelings of emotion that might be kind of hitting you out of nowhere. I know that's been happening to me, I have not really been able to identify exactly what the story is. I just feel suddenly in my body perhaps a lot of grief. I, there's a very strong theme and of emotional ex expression of grief, very old grief. And we do know that the reality of intergenerational trauma is translated down through our DNA as human beings and can be activated and reactivated during different times in the lifespan, especially during times of stress. And goodness knows 2020 has been a year of tremendous stress for most people. So 
those emotional stories and mental stories that are coming up are where we place our focus, right? When they come up, we, we become engaged with them. We dialogue with them in our mind. And where we place our, our energy and where we place our focus is where we are giving our power away. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. It depends on what the energy is going to, what the focus is. So in thinking about what has been coming up in your own mind lately, it's an opportunity to reevaluate the dialogue and the story and determine for yourself, I would say individually and collectively as a society, although this video I'm going to speak more about our individual experience related to this eclipse, it's really an opportunity to say, is that story serving me or am I giving power away in a place that is just keeping me in the old because all of the astrology of 2020 is really about deconstructing the old old structures falling apart economies political systems societal beliefs ways of living all of that has really in so many countries in the world started to deconstruct not started <laughs> dramatically deconstructed even just attributing that to COVID alone. And when there is an old deconstruction and this uh, Capricorn energy and Saturn-Pluto conjunction that started in the very beginning of the year, really started in December of 2019, that energy is sort of sweeping away. It's, it's tearing things down really over a period of the next few years so that new structures can be built up. And in this way, this eclipse is asking us individually to say, what am I really ready to leave behind? What am I really, what story have I been carrying that is truly not helping me move forward in my life? It is not helping me find more peace and balance and love and connection in my day-to-day -day life. What am I willing to reframe? How might I look at it differently so that it can serve me better and I can move forward into my beloved future into the life that I hadn't lived into all the experiences and all the people places and things that I have not yet encountered that I can't even imagine how might I do that in a more open-hearted way if I were to reorganize some of those structures in my mind and thoughts and patterns and there's a real the, the reason why I'm, I'm making this at the last minute and I, my hands are freezing because it's like 20 degrees outside where I live <laughs> uh, and I'm wearing my winter sequins um, <laughs> is because there's a sense of permanence and finality to this if I haven't mentioned it already it's a real opportunity it's a huge opportunity to actually permanently change permanently change a negative narrative or story or um, tightness to pain from the past and really move forward in a different direction now, it means that, again, there's a lot of emotional um, feelings, there's a lot of intensity in the air, and you will probably feel that, you know, you've probably been feeling it for a month, you're probably going to feel it for the next couple of weeks as we move to the solar eclipse. We're going to have a lot of aha moments, memories, pieces kind of fitting together about the past, coming together um, in your mind about understanding yourself, understanding people understanding the dynamics that happened that might be seeing your parents in a different way understanding kind of their humanity and um, seeing them as flawed imperfect human beings that were doing their best it might be seeing um, a toxic partner or relationship from the past and really understanding that that is that person's path and they have wounding perhaps more similar to yours than different but it showed up in different ways now, this deconstruction of the old, as we put all that together, is moving us to mid-December at the solar eclipse and then that 21st, uh, December 21st solstice when Jupiter and Saturn move out of Capricorn. They're at the very end of Capricorn right now. They are going to move into Aquarius. Truly, the age of Aquarius is going to shift everything for us collectively. I really believe that. I have been using um, astrology in my own psychotherapy practice, my own spiritual development, and to some degree with clients for a very long time because I can see individually and collectively the true impact. And I didn't used to believe in this, by the way. Um, I was very skeptical about astrology until, oh, I don't know, maybe my mid-20s. Um, I dabbled a little bit, but the older I get, the more experience I have, the more 
life uh, wisdom hopefully I accumulate and the more folks I work with the more I really trust that looking to the sky as a mirror of our individual and collective experience is a very helpful framework for understanding ourselves and what's happening on the 21st is an evolutionary jump in consciousness it is probably going to happen regardless for all of us to some degree and those of us that can use this especially two week three week window of time to prepare and focus on understanding those old narratives and reframing them into positive ones will have a huge leg up into whatever changes occur in 2021 we'll have a huge leg up in our own personal experience of the world i really believe by understanding ourselves on a deeper level, being willing to let go of what's no longer serving us and embracing that we have simply changed. I don't think most of us right now are the same person we were at the beginning of this year. Uh, in terms of my own growth and development, I am not remotely the same person I was a year ago, two years ago, certainly not five years ago. My lifestyle, the people I associate with, the way I even relate to my children, all of those things have dramatically changed for me in a very short period of time and we're going to continue to see that acceleration so now in this window of time is the opportunity again to focus and prepare to feel deeply what we might have been repressing and be prepared to jump into that next stage of growth and awareness and evolution so I'd like you to take a look at the patterns that are emerging in the thoughts and memories and visions perhaps that have been coming to you, perhaps that are even coming up to you right now as you're watching this. And for example, some of the patterns that you might notice, I highly encourage you to speak these out loud to someone that you love and trust and or to write them down. So when you look back at the past, have you idealized people and then swung to demonizing them? Have you idolized yourself and then swung to demonizing yourself? Have you had a tendency to blame yourself and not look at the flaws of others and then swing to blaming other people for your problems? Where have you been honest or dishonest to yourself and to others? And this requires, um, in mental health we call this ego strength, it requires a sense of I'm flawed and I have a shadow side. That's all these sort of negative qualities that we tend to want to hide away into the basement and pretend they don't exist. When we are willing to face those and integrate them, then we can engender so much more love and compassion for ourselves that our own judgment of self goes down so that we no longer judge others. Then we're not activated by the actions and behaviors and emotions and speech of others so much. So that's why facing these patterns and being honest about them and loving yourself within that understanding creates dramatic and profound transformation and change in your experience of the world and your life. And I believe my own experience in working with folks in my own life is that then things really change on the outside when that inner relationship has shifted. So other patterns that you might want to notice are where have you not trusted yourself? Where have you placed your trust in others before it was earned and neglected to trust yourself? Where could you be growing to trust yourself? Where is there repressed pain or ways that you have distracted yourself from grief that perhaps can now be felt more deeply and fully to be released to the degree that they can be at this time? That's always what I ask my guides. Help me to feel fully so that I can release to whatever can be released at this time. Any other time that you can notice a pattern where you focused on others' behavior instead of your own can contribute to this shift. So what this is bringing us to is a new, the new, the change, a new way to understand and accept. And this is what my invitation is to you, to say that when, I, when we look at these patterns, I am going to look at them with curiosity, not with judgment. I'm going to look at them with compassion, whether that's the partner you had that you feel very wronged by, maybe there's been several, or a parent, or a colleague, or a friend who betrayed you. How can you see 
with curiosity that pattern and how you played a role how you might have even in other places been acting similarly but not wanting to acknowledge that and then how can you forgive yourself you might even want to write a forgiveness letter to yourself about a particular situation I often encourage people to write a forgiveness letter to their inner child as adults we often will still be choosing friendships and collegial relationships and intimate partnerships from a place of our inner wounded child who is trying to work out something from the past and if you're putting those pieces together and seeing that pattern if you're like yeah yeah I've known that forever but I'm still doing it and I'm you know beating myself up this is a time to write them a forgiveness letter I forgive you for doing this I understand why you've acted this way I understand why you've been trying to fix this and heal this hole and feel loved unconditionally and I'm here to do that for you now when you write the letter of forgiveness to yourself whether it's your inner child or your teenage self or your 25 year old self that made some interesting decisions that you might not make now you are coming into loving compassionate awareness with yourself in relationship and that changes all future relationships when you do that now again when you complete these tasks the major psychological accomplishment is freeing ourselves up for the new now what new agreements do you want to commit to and this is not pass or fail this is just recognizing there are some ways I'm ready to shift I'm ready to move forward I'm ready to bring new and different into my life I'm ready to leave that old story behind and again I encourage you to write these down are you committing to judging yourself less and therefore others less because those are very related all hatred is self-hatred all judgment is self-judgment where am I willing to commit to being honest with myself and believing myself and trusting myself the first time where can I commit to celebrating my evolution and that's where I'd like to end here is all of the processes that the astrology is supporting as individuals and the collective are to be celebrated this change and shift is a celebration who knows exactly what the future will bring for all of us individually but we can really take the time to celebrate the change and shift in perspective that we are brave enough and courageous enough because this is not easy work it involves feeling a lot of pain and then being willing to release it and embrace new patterns of thinking and behavior now if you need more support in doing this I highly suggest that you look up an EFT or tapping uh, practitioner or look read how to do that there's lots of videos on YouTube or see an EMDR therapist there's actually lots of self EMDR tools that you can use for deeper trauma that is simply feels beyond you to let go and there's no blame or shame for things that aren't ready to be released right now it is simply a real ripe opportunity to release what is ready to be left in the past and move um, as you moved as you move into your beautiful future ahead of you that again you we can't even imagine what that will be right now but loving ourselves in the process of understanding what really can be understood and then dropped in the past and reframed for how we can put the focus back on ourselves moving into the future that is cause for celebration that is cause for a bubble bath that is cause for bubbly water or champagne or whatever you like to celebrate with because ultimately what this full moon lunar eclipse is all about <clears throat> is keeping promises to ourselves new promises new promises to love and be kind and have compassionate for compassion for ourselves and to accept and integrate the pain of the past I hope that this has been helpful for you thank you so much for subscribing thank you for sharing thank you for liking please leave me comments about this video down below I'd love to know what your take on all of this is astrology and mental health in your own life particularly this full moon lunar eclipse and I look forward to seeing you next time bye bye